Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Empowered Podcast Season 6 and as we continue our discussion on rebuilding the education system, the educational landscape that we have right now at this time of the pandemic, we continue to talk about other topics, other uh, important and essential aspects of what it means to rebuild our education. And for this episode, I am very much happy to welcome uh, a very how you call that, um, a very immersed person, uh, a person who's very much immersed and has uh, touch based with a lot of communities because basically his work involves working with different, not just school communities, it's basically communities like barangays or, or towns or cities. So I'm very much happy to welcome Mr. Jay Habonete. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jim. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, it's an honor. To- It's an honor for us to, uh, to welcome you here. Uh, just a short introduction. Jay is the Managing Director of Nexus Innovation Labs at De La Salle Lipa. So he's, not, he's also the co-founder of Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation. So he juggles a lot of, of things to do. Uh, he's a new father <laughs> he has a, uh, with a baby, a new baby at home right now. So I don't know, Jay, how you're managing those uh, your responsibilities right now. Pero welcome to the show. And first things first, how are you? How is work from home and distance learning working for for you in your work and, and at home? Thank you again, Jim. I'm excited to share. Hopefully, uh, the lessons that I'm going to share are uh, valuable for everyone. Uh, yeah, it, is, it has been a very challenging uh, past few months. Or maybe almost a year already uh, for us at Dela Salipa, uh, and of course for me uh, per- personally, um, you know, I uh, I never nobody expected 2020 to be you know that kind of year, um, and we're still living with the pandemic. But uh, I I guess for I I'd like to um, share this that you know uh, even though for for a lot of people 2020 uh, they would say is a sad or difficult year. Um, it's a year that you know I got married, I, and I also uh, you know my first uh, son, his first child was born, ke- baby Kenzo. So I, uh, for me, you know, 2020 is a uh, not even bittersweet. It's really you know a wonderful year. Uh, I became a dad. Um, uh, I love being uh, you know a dad to Kenzo. Uh, and um, but of course there are struggles, and I, I guess for a lot of other parents out there. Um, I'm lucky that uh, I, I was just uh, talking to Jim earlier that, you know, uh, a lot of, I, I'm sure a lot of parents, uh, I have a sister in Cebu uh, and, you know, she, she's struggling with her two kids in grade school because of that, uh, you know, the projects, the assignments, and of course, the keeping up with the online modules. Um, as for me, of course, the household chores, uh, you know, uh, it, it requires some balancing act together with work from home. And of course, uh, taking care of our baby. So it has been a challenging uh, past 12 months, but I feel like it is also an opportunity for us to reflect. Um, and of course, I think one of the key highlights is to have a community, uh, you know, uh, both online and offline. Uh, I've joined, uh, you know, uh, communities on Facebook about, you know, how to be a dad, uh, how to be a parent. Uh, I've even... Yeah, you know, I, I I read some mom blogs as well, uh, so that you know we 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 know that we're doing things right. Um, and I guess for in terms of education and distance learning, um, I, I guess as a school administrator, it's very important to to be aware of these challenges. You know, our teachers, our uh, other school personnel uh, uh, face challenges at home. Uh, I was just speaking to a colleague. Um, You know, when when she she is very focused at work, uh, she forgets that sometimes that she's cooking lunch. So it got burned. Uh, so it's good that there are you know food apps that you can order food online. Um, but again, I I think there are uh, while distance learning or remote learning uh, has advantages. Of course, there are also disadvantages. So we we have to be very conscious of this uh, of these changes that are happening. Thank you so much, Jay. Um, thank you for for that insight on on your personal experience right now. I think um, it resonates. Not uh, well, 2020 in general has been very challenging, but 
yeah, like what you've said, we reflect on the little happiness for you, grand happiness. Congratulations for being married and having a newborn baby. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, it's not just a silver lining. It's actually maybe the highlight of your year. Um, I like that. I like what you've mentioned about reflection. I think if there's one thing that 2020 has really pushed us, I mean, the pandemic itself, not just 2020, it's really more of reflecting on the structures that we have, like what you've said, the role of parents, the role of, of, of students, uh, teachers, administrators. Um, not everything uh, was thrown out the window, but we were forced to stop, pause maybe, and think about it. And, and you mentioned about your engagement with the community. Uh, Jay, uh, we're very much familiar of, uh, about Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation. Um, I love the story behind it. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of the work that you have done. Um, given your experience and, and touching bases with communities, what is the role of the community right now? I mean, like we've heard stories from, from schools, from administrators, from teachers. But if we want to rebuild education, we must involve the community. So can you share us your thoughts about the role of the community in supporting the schools, especially yeah. public schools? Like I think it's very schools. important, you know, the role of a community or a tribe. Uh, I, I, I guess, you know, I, I, I forgot to mention a bit about Yellow Boat. So, of course, that's uh, an additional, uh, you know, work that I had to juggle during the pandemic, um, during the last few months. But uh, you know, we've been over the last ten years of Yellow Boat. We've been able to build uh, a tribe, really a a community or a village who are passionate about raising kids, about you know children's education, and we're very fortunate that um, you know we have this community. And for me, it's very important because, like, when the pandemic started, especially the quarantine, you know, the 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 quarantine protocols or uh, policies came into place. Um, a lot of kids uh, were stuck at home and, of course, uh, together with their parents. So we immediately, um, you know, uh, brainstormed and uh, had discussions with our community members uh, because most of, the, I would say, eight, uh, 90 to maybe 99% of Yellow Boat communities are around public uh, schools and public school and the community leaders are public school teachers. And so um, the fundamental challenge became, uh, of course, access to technology access to the online module so uh we were able to bring about uh you know we also have a lot of community of uh, donors and um companies uh, corporate partners so we were able to raise funds so that we can bring printers um uh, as you know a lot of our communities are in fire flung communities so even if we can give them a tablet or a computer or a phone some of them uh, there's no telco signal so all uh, the best way to for them to learn, uh, what, you know, without face-to-face uh, -face, uh, uh, learning is, you know, for the printed modules to be brought to them. So I, I think for 50 of our 200 communities, we were able to reach out immediately within the the first few months of the uh, of the lockdowns of the quarantine. Um, and of course, that effort is still ongoing. Um, of course, you might have heard his. Uh, we work with Power Max Center as well. Uh, so they uh, launch a donation drive for people to come into the stores uh, uh, to donate their old gadgets. So we were able to raise, I think, around 400 to 500. Um, and we've sent this out to deserving beneficiaries, both um, you know, public school teachers and students who have no working uh, gadgets. And uh, they, we were able to bring it to them. And they're now using it for online learning. So, you know, that for me, it's very important to have that community because, of course, the, the government, the Department of Education, and, of course, the local um, uh, officials, uh, you, though there are resources that uh, are at their disposal, it's not enough. Um, and so it's important for the private sector and for individuals uh, to come together. And for me, you know, now as a parent, uh, it, it, it really... It really dawned on me that it's important for us to to uh, to share what we have and uh, help others who might not have access to these uh, technologies or to education in general. So for me, it's very important for us to connect with community uh, with communities who are uh, also passionate around uh, solving these problems. Yeah, I love your story about 
your concrete way of helping right now. Uh, when I when I think of yellow boat, of course the yellow boat itself comes into my mind. But I like the way you pivot, the way you you got in touch with school communities and really think of, you know, it's very concrete. Like we need tablets, we need devices for our teachers. I think not all of them. Um, you know, you said that there are no telco signals in others, but I think those devices are enablers, devices that allows teachers to create their own learning materials. I think that has been the struggle. Um, I think it's a very good job. Like a lot, I've seen a lot of, of individual, private individuals who has also, who have also shared um, the idea of, of giving printers, bond papers, uh, to to yes. our public school teachers, and you know, I I love that insight that um, it's the sharing of resources. I think it's not just the idea of having a community to be with you, but the idea that you share you share materials, you share resources. I was just checking a lesson plan a while ago, and the le the, the the topic of the lesson plan is about uh, community and the basic idea of community when we teach it or teach it to kinder or to grade one is a community is not just people living together, but sharing, sharing things together, sharing time together, sharing ideas together. So you form different uh, communities and then you form bonds. So I love your, 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 your example of how you were able to touch bases with communities, therefore, therefore helping um, school communities inside those communities. And I've seen the pictures uh, with, with Ryan, our friend. So yes. Ryan has been a very good uh, school leader. And Ryan, I think, is also an example of a person who really involves um, everyone, mobilizes the school community because he knows. I think that's one important thing that we need to have. Uh, when we are aware of our own limitations and therefore we know what we need, and therefore, we know whom to collaborate with. I think the idea is there. Um, anything else that you want to share about the big idea of? I've heard it from you, and I've heard it often also. Uh, it takes a village to raise a child right now. So, um, Jay, how do you like? How do you interpret that right now at this time around? Well, I think, you know, even if there's no face-to-face, -face, um, uh, it's I, th I believe it's an old African proverb, uh, the, you know, the, the, that quote that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. But I think even now, uh, even though most of our uh, interactions and connections are done online, uh, it's very important. And I, I, I guess I, I explained a bit already about the education. And, um, you know, it's very important to note as well that, you know, as a new parent, I've, I've seen like a multitude of communities around how uh, parents are adjusting as well to this new normal of, you know, them being like uh, the principal in a way. They're the principal teacher or, or uh, sometimes they become the student as well. And, you know, for other parents to share how they're coping up with these uh, challenges, it's able to help a lot of other parents who might not have, you know, the time, who might not uh, know where to start in terms of um, helping their kids navigate online learning. Um, uh, some, pe you know, some kids are better at, you know, using these digital tools than their parents. So the parents uh, had to learn um, how to use this along, of course, with some teachers who are also, you know, behind in terms of technology adoption. So for me, I guess the big idea really here is um, to realize that, uh, you know, it's important for us to connect uh, there because there are different strengths. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you might no not know how to do a certain thing, but, you know, another community or another person has actually solved it already. And so you can learn from that experience. So um, you, you mentioned uh, Ryan Homan. Uh, and, and for me, you know, it's the same. Uh, I I uh, I can empathize with his example. He's passionate about education, about helping children. He might not necessarily be, you know, full of resources or a rich person, but he realized. And uh, for me, ten years ago, I also realized, you know, I'm not rich, but I have a lot of rich friends on Facebook <laughs> who were able to donate, who were able to, uh, you know, connect me with uh, potential uh, donors. So for me, it's very important for you to be become creative. And 
you know, by uh, by looking at how others have done it or by learning from others. Um, and, you know, even, uh, you know, a podcast like this, uh, I think people can pick up, you know, insights and lessons that they can apply in their life. So for me, it's really important because, you know, no, uh, I'm sure this is a very uh, often used cliche, you know, no man is an island. Uh, it's very important that for, to ask for help. And I, I feel that if there's a community around you that's already willing to help, then, uh, you know, you'd be able to um, surmount any challenges that you face. So for me, again, I, I, I guess uh, the one thing that I want to add in this discussion is we consider um, the school leaders, uh, our community leaders as hope paddlers because they bring hope uh, to these communities. And so for me, even if you cannot donate, even if you cannot share, you know, a particular material resource, you can share the post, or you know, of a, of a community, of a school community that needs help. And maybe you have friends uh, on on any social media platform that can help them. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you know, if you don't have actual resources, you cannot help. Sometimes by sharing it, by mentioning it. Uh, by talking about, uh, you know, the challenge to your friends or to your family, you don't know. Someone might, uh, or, you know, might be waiting for the opportunity to help. So uh, I guess that's, you know, that's a basic point that I want to share. And we use it a lot in the Yellow Boat. Um, our operating philosophy, uh, if you allow me, Jim, uh, I, I'm sure you've heard <laughs> it a lot of time, but, um, you know, a little lamp, uh, the great thing a little lamp can do which the big sun cannot do is give light at night. It shows us that no one is superior by size, but by purpose. If we cannot do great things, we can surely do small things in a great way because little things make a big difference to God. So, you know, uh, even with the story of Yellow Boat, it started with a Facebook status and then we were able to build one boat uh, and then we it went viral We and then we saw need of more school boats in other places. So now we're uh, at around 5,000 boats given uh, to over 200 communities. So I never imagined, you know, that that Facebook status would turn into a nonprofit, a foundation, uh, and a movement really uh, of community builders, of hope builders uh, that we have today. Jay, I love that you pointed out and you've been really emphasizing and living it up like, you know, we need to take advantage of the connection that we have. Um, we're very social beings. Like what you've said, no one is an island. Uh, and I love that you've elevated the idea of what it means to take advantage of the connections that we have. Connections, meaning, you know, you don't have to have all the resources to, to help other people, like what you've said. But even virtually, like a Facebook status, I think this is the time to really push the idea that we can use technology for social good. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, technology has been frowned upon by a lot of people because, you know, the, the, the negative effects or disadvantages. But uh, like what you've said, and that what, it's, that, that what inspires me actually in terms of technology, and I've used it often in my example when I speak to people, I've often pointed to your story, to the story of Yellow Boat of Hope, that, you know, Facebook is not at all that bad, you know. It's what we do with Facebook that makes it good. How and, we use it. And yes. And, and regardless, it's a tool. It could be a knife in the kitchen. It could be a knife for, for maybe stabbing someone. We don't advocate that. But, <laughs> but you know, the, the idea is there. Regardless of uh, what the tool is, it's how we make use of it that really matters. And thank you for pointing that out. Um, Jay, last thoughts. Um, we are now the last part of our discussion. And I love to hear your thoughts about those, maybe we have an, uh, educators or school leaders out there who want to connect, who want to collaborate with other people, but they might be experiencing some, you know, the Filipino culture of hiya, right? The hiya to connect. They're, they're a little bit shy to go out there. Um, a message to those, uh, maybe an encouraging message for us to further strike connection and really build on the idea of community. Well, for, for me, I don't have you know, one advice uh, to give them, but I, I guess uh, what I want to share with you is that 
you know, if there, if you feel that there's a compelling need or there's a compelling problem that needs to be solved in your, uh, you know, in your neighborhood or in your community, I feel like you have a responsibility to share it or in a way to pitch uh, it to people so that, you know, you can build a community that will help them. Because, you know, there might be no one else who ha might have seen that problem or, you know, who might have uh, an interest in solving that problem. And if you are that person, um, it's very important to, for you to feel the responsibility because it means that, you know, you, you saw a need, you can empathize, you can put your, yourself in the shoes of another person or, or, or of a community. And uh, that's a special quality. That's a special skill. You know, not everyone, um, that's why there's a huge uh, growth on training programs around design thinking, uh, self-awareness, empathy. Because uh, people realize it's not naturally, uh, you know, incumbent upon, uh, on people to be able to put yourself in the shoes of another. So if you have that, you know, nagging feeling that you want to help, just start, you know, with a little thing. Um, I, to be honest, when uh, I first posted the story of the swimming kids, it was actually so that, you know, so I was hoping someone will see it and do something about it. I never imagined that, you know, uh, the um, one of the first donors said, what are you going to, here's, you know, uh, uh, he pledged a certain amount and he said, but what are you going to do about it? So for me, you know, it, it starts with caring. Uh, and, you know, if you have that urge, just, just start a conversation. Maybe, uh, you know, talk to a friend that you trust. Uh, you know, and, and just, you know, talk about the particular problem and what you want to do about it and then just start from there. And then if they don't want to listen, then move on to the next person. But, you know, since the digital tools are there, I think there's always someone who's listening. Um, uh, I, I don't think, you know, you would go on Facebook or Twitter or, uh, or, or on any other channel if you're not, a, you don't have a friend, uh, you know, so post something uh, and then you don't know someone might respond someone might you know if, if it's a knee it's a it's a, re a resource that you need maybe someone um, and that's what happened with yellow boat you know I I just posted a story and then uh, and you know now there's a lot of examples you know there's uh, people donating for uh, you know medical bills uh, there's people donating for uh, you know shoes for sleepers. There's, there's a host of examples about people helping in little ways, do, donating old books, donating old learning materials, donating even gadgets. So for me, all it takes is for you to, you know, to, to, to get some courage and start a conversation with someone. Uh, just talk to a friend. Uh, maybe if you, know, if you do an inventory, you already have a friend who is into this into helping, into starting fundraisers, into, uh, I, in, 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 in my network, I see a lot of people, you know, after a disaster, they would, ra they would raise funds, they would go to the supermarket, and then they would, you know, pack it themselves and then distribute it to the affected uh, areas. So for, for me, if you have that kind of friend, you know, maybe you can consult with them, you can talk to them. Um, but Remember, you know, especially if you are a teacher or if you are a school leader, uh, you have a responsibility if you see a particular problem. And for me, it's very important because if you won't act on it and nobody else sees that problem, then that problem will fester, will continue to exist. So for me, it's very important. And um, as a last note, um, you know, again, don't, don't be afraid. Uh, you know, of failure. Don't be afraid of making mistakes because that's part of the process. Um, you know, failures are stepping stones to success. You know, if you talk to this person and uh, they're not listening, they're not interested, then just go talk to another person. Um, you know, if in sales, I used to be in sales, um, there's usually a certain percentage. Uh, they call it the law of averages. You need to, you know... Uh, even in fairy tales, there's a story about, you know, uh, the princess has to kiss a lot of frogs to find his prince. So it's the same in life. You do need to talk to a lot of people to find uh, the right person. But uh, just take the first step. You might not see 
you know, the whole staircase, as Martin Luther King said. But just take the first step, and then you'll see it eventually. Yeah, I love I love your words of wisdom, uh, Jay. That really puts forward. Just my final thought. Also, it's it's really about you know uh, working together, sharing your problem, sharing your thoughts. Make it makes the problem a lot easier. So yes. I think that's what we're learning right now with the pandemic. No one has the solution. No one, no person has the single solution. And like what they've said, we have to be in this thing together so that we can find better solutions and help our school communities out there. So thank you so much, Jay. It's been a wonderful conversation uh, with you and we hope to listen to you more, to get inspired and to know more about your, your work Uh, with communities around the Philippines. So thank you so much, Jay. It's been an honor. Thank you also to our uh, listeners, our audience right now. Thank you for, for sticking with us at Empower Ed and, and continue listening and supporting our podcast and our uh, video uh, podcast at YouTube channel. So we, we will wait for you. We will see you again for our next episode, our last episode is the one that will follow after this. And we hope to see you more often. Thank you so much, everyone, and stay safe. Bye, Jay. Bye, thank everyone. Thank you, Jim, and thank you, everyone, for listening.